what I'd like to do is go through um, the different divisions and not line by line, but basically, um, basically go through each division and show you the highlights. And the first one would be in your handout is the town clerk. Before we get through that, let me tell you the common things. The common things that you can see throughout the town budget, the workers' comp has gone up, and you can say, wow, that's a dramatic increase. What did you have, really bad experience? No. It's a result of two factors. Um, one factor is that we're unbudgeted this year for workers' comp. Probably by about $35,000, $40,000 town line. And secondly is the, the classification rates went up for each classification, which patrolman, policeman, whatever, that went up. Um, but our experience, that went down. So you wouldn't have seen a much more of an increase had our experience been more. But our um, experience factor, called the modification rate, went from 8.85 down to 0.72, which offset some of the increase. But it is still an increase, and you'll see that grow. Um, the other part, uh, unemployment went down throughout admin budget, and the retirement uh, went down through the admin budget because group one got a decrease in retirement rates, whereas group two, which is police and fire, had a dramatic increase. Okay, so let me just go through the unique parts of each division. The town clerk's budget is at 2.59%. Um, the part that we'll probably see as biggest increase is printing and binding, and that's because this year we restored the preservation of documents. We're required by state law to come up with the management and um, preservation of old vital records, and that's what that one is. <clears throat> Nothing else really significant in her budget. Um, probably supplies. Um, Office supplies were up about 25%. Oh, not an election oh, yet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> School and town clerk. And so basically it's two lines that are significantly up. And the office supplies, that's for her job licensing tags, labels and notices, and general office supplies. Just curious though, Sue. Yes. Uh, I look at the department that request, and then I look at what the selectmen did, and in this particular area, the regular wages and elected officials went up. It, it didn't go up much. <coughs> Yes, um, the Board of Selection decided that um, they have frozen steps and they continue to freeze steps. Uh, if most of you know, we have what, nine steps on our system and there's okay, there are 4% increases a year. And after a year of service and a, and a passing a performance evaluation, you usually get steps. But we have to have done that last year, this year, or next year. But it is a constant increase, and that's reflected in and the other lines related to those are anything based on wages and as you know by the next year, workers come. Um, so that accounts for those increases. Any questions on town clerk? I would just say, just so um, some, some of the newer members know, um, our our admin budgets, and I don't think we have anybody, I, I think almost all are non-union personnel. So they're not represented by a collective bargaining. Sue? So, yes. What accounts for the change in uh, printing and binding? That's the preservation of her documents, her vital Pres records. Vital records. Okay. That's a pretty big jump. I mean, in terms. Yeah, if you look at 2010, I think it's. Again, this is what I went back to before a couple hours ago when I was uh, trying to get John to help us out. Is These are the types of things we got to keep paper every day. And if you look at the amount of storage that that, uh, that she has to deal with, paper, records, I mean, it's, it's almost laughable in this day and age that we do this, but they want everything in paper. Paper back, I mean, you know, paper backups for everything. And um, it's it's expensive. Yeah. It, it's not. These are the old file yeah. records. They actually have to right. preserve. It's a special fair. process. Right. But yeah. even as we go forward, so much stuff, if you ask her, it is it's so paper driven. This year, we didn't budget for any preservation documents. But if you look at 2010, it was in there were 5,000 back in 2010. OK, so then we are skipped a year. So we skipped a year. OK. And I would be remiss not to indicate that one of the things, because um, in archives, the one thing that they have actually said that in the last 200 years is microfiche. 
paper lasts 200 years. Electronic data, there's no guarantee it'll even last three years. When's the last time you took a three and a half or a five and a quarter inch copy where I put it in your computer and said, hey, where's my data? It's gone. There haven't been any standards, and that's where the legislature can get involved and say, these are the standards around the preservation of electronic documents. So that's one of the reasons why the state is still requiring paper. The paper doesn't last 200 years. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. The paper that is required to last, lasts. As in trade. Okay, ready? 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 Probably. I'm going to scrap this. Under election, you'll see a sizable increase uh, in the election budget. It's up 48 to 6 percent, and there's a reason for that. This year we have one election. Next year we have four, I think. Three or Primary four. is still going to be next year? It, it appears that Nevada is most likely going to move their election so that the secretary can announce that it will probably be for January. Yeah. Probably that's still up in the air. We'll see. But for now, there's four elections next year until we hear otherwise. general fund which has in you know the largest dollar amounts involved what we've done is we've changed the accounts whereby uh, instead of earning you know pittances per month in interest and incurring huge fees what we've done is we've we've switched we've had the bank change the structure of the account whereby we get an earnings credit allowance against um, you know they figure out a balance each month they give us a credit and if the earnings credit is higher than the, the bank banking service fees, it basically wipes out the fees. The other, the only other side of that is, of course, the interest goes away as well. But there's a pretty significant savings on the banking fees per year. Um, I would say potentially maybe even two or three thousand dollars, which I know is a small piece of the overall picture, but it's a savings to the town nonetheless. So John is our watchdog for that. Absolutely. Uh, Sue? Yes. Uh, I have three checkbooks and used to be with citizens. I am with St. Mary's because of that reason. Uh, so I don't know if you guys want to look at St. Mary's. They're, they are open for business over there. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm not sure if they do commercial accounts. But they do because I'm commercial. Check. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I know um, we're required to use Citizens Bank for all the motor vehicle. Um, money that comes in because we have to deposit it into the state account and that's their bank. So I don't think we can ever get away from some things. Any other questions on finance? Administration, again, this was another office impacted by the reorganization and um, <coughs> increase in admin and finance, like I said, equals the reduction in planning and zoning. Um, is really jumping out at me here in terms of increases. Uh, I think the rental or equipment went up because posted new postage machine that the, all the departments use, all the mail goes through town hall, um, and also the rental of the copy machines. The next, one is, right, the next one is rebound. Um, no tax, tax. 
tax, tax yeah. collections. Yeah. Um, that was at a negative 3.61% in the um,
from your Comcast bill, you get a cable franchise-related pass-through and add it to your bill every month. So we were cognizant of that, and we want to be careful that you know we don't increase users' fees. Any questions? Now we are, we talked about planning or zoning on that that decreased largely that because decreased of the, the, the change, shifting, the shifting of those. Mm -hmm. uh, other general government will see a decrease uh, there. Yes, those are the committees can report on right. as well. Uh, building inspection is pretty nominal. Um, human services, you'll see an increase, and that's simply we that's an increase in some folks asking for assistance. Um, By law, the yeah. town is the um, ultimate safety net. Yeah. We're the safety yeah. net for anyone in need um, because of changes at the state level um, and the numbers we're seeing now. We're anticipating an increase, and she um, asked for seven thousand more in order to manage that. And, and interestingly, it, interestingly, it goes back to the whole uh, swimming pool thing, Bill. Um, it, regard, you, you don't have to be uh, group residency. You just you come in. Uh, oh. There is no. Uh, oh, we don't. No, you do. But I'm saying to be a resident. But um, no, no, you can get assistance, right? You don't have to. Is that right? Where you ever you laid your head right before? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so if you find someone who is in another town. You may assist on a person's basis if you reverse the other town. Yeah. But if you spent the night at the Todd Common, you're right. Yeah. You're awesome. That's it. <laughs> so uh, that's that. Uh, Peg TV is the last one. And I'm trying to remember what we have. The only um, uh, difference is in here is we have budgeted an additional. Oh, yeah. Hours, uh, hours yes, for, for taping. Almost, yes. um, I think it was six hours. Another six hours a week for the taking of government meetings and the chapterizing of those this time. Uh, Andrew comes in, tapes all our government meetings and goes back to GTV and chapterizes them to put them on video and demand for everyone. So, um, well, you know, the feedback from most residents is that, um, I mean, this has to go with the whole transparency of government thing, but most residents really like um, the fact that they can view it on demand and that it's, it's chapterized and, you know, I, I make a push for this in the sense that I know that it's an increase, but it gives people who may not ordinarily have, you know, have the means to even get to a government meeting. They can keep informed, and uh, it's, it, I think it's a good thing. I think the board thinks it's a good thing. We move that kept it. Um, next thing we want to kind of follow up, we do have a few CIP items. Yes, we do. And, yep, we want, so you want to talk first about the finance software? Yes, uh, finance software has been in CIP for several years and has been approved for the past two years uh, and again for next year. Um, but because of the economy in the past two years, we cut it out because it was a huge, um, for us, a huge investment. Uh, we have spent more time into doing um, John and IT and assistant time administrators and vendors. Uh, and one thing I want to note on your handouts, it still says find in and land use software. You can cross out land use because that's why it's been reduced from 480 to 300,000. Um, land use is something we would like to have, but right now our immediate need is to replace the current finance software we have. The software we have, we purchased back in 2010 when the state went to a state education tax and our old software couldn't handle that, so we got a grant from the state to purchase the software we currently have. 2010? 2000. 2000, I'm sorry. 2000. 10 years ago. <laughs> Do you know how much that was? What did it cost? Back then, it cost, um, I think it was about $80,000. 80000 Yes. Um, that vendor is, um, has not made any investments into the finance software. They also They've made their investments in the town clerk software for motor vehicles. So that's where they have focused their attention, not on our finance software. So we haven't gotten any version updates. Uh, it's basically a mom and pop operation with one part time person who is our support person that I think works three days a week. So um, they have lost some of them. We're their largest community right now. They've lost uh, Bedford mm -hmm. last year. Um, and I think they're only down to, I think only maybe a handful of towns in the state are using that kind of software. Um, so do you, do you know how much we spend a year on maintenance? For that? On okay. use of licenses? 
Well, just for this software, that we're looking for eight thousand dollars. Five thousand. Five thousand dollars a year. Five or six. That's what Neil told us when he was in. And then that gives you some tech support, right? Tech support. Yeah. Hard time. For five thousand. So uh, we, can, uh, like I said, finance and IT have been interviewing different centers, and basically the ones that uh, can offer us the support we need, <coughs> they're in the range of around 300000 just to replace the modules we currently have. So there's no extras here, um, you know, general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, payroll, HR. Um, and we did post, um, Bill, who asked the question about open source or open source software, uh, they did they considered open source as well as proprietary and um, software as a service. What? Software as a service. I think the term. Software as a service. Okay. And uh, they uh, say Neil and those and, he, and the folks that Neil is working with, uh, you know, Don. They decided that the best route to go is to go with software. Uh, where we, where, we, where, we where we are, where we are. And I'll tell you, a uh, major portion of that 300,000 is uh, conversion of the data for the past uh, 10 years, 11 years. So they'll convert that data into new software. So could you talk about the, um, the interconnectivity with the other departments as far as things like entering payroll and how is that done currently and how would that occur? Currently it's on paper. Uh, so well, Excel spreadsheets come over and or actual time cards come over and our bookkeepers enter it. We're hoping that this will, this new software will have that ability that the other departments can enter their own payroll and then we're just doing the quality control to make sure it's right. It reduces the, the labor cost part of it. You aren't saying that it would produce an employee then? No. no. <coughs> I, think what, I think what it does is it makes us more efficient in all of our departments so as, as pressures demands of, of uh, service pressures across the board, we're able to kind of stay within our current staffing because we're able to leverage technology. As I said, right now, we have folks that, you know, we're manually doing a lot of these things because the software is antiquated. And implementation would be at least one year for new finance software. Well, the question I had was, uh, on that 300,000, uh, how much is it approximate, if you know, uh, would the yearly maintenance IT support, or whatever you want to call it, be? It depends on the vendor. Uh, we've heard a range, so I give you a range. Yep. yep. Twenty-five to thirty-five thousand a year. Twenty-five to thirty-five. And that's included in the three hundred thousand. For the first year, and then after yes, that. And then after that, it's, they usually run about ten percent of the initial cost. Is what um, most of these vendors are running. And so, who is the vendor? Do you have one selected already? No. Oh. No, okay. we haven't gone out for our RP. We just interviewed a wide variety of them. So it's the general cost. Yes. Okay. Dan, uh, do you remember when we did, you, were, you and I served on that one when we did the uh, school district one. I mean, it, I think the cost was more than, a lot more than that. The penetration product. It's funny too, because I just pulled up, I was looking at some of that data. So I There's no price in there at all? I have like 400 something. Yeah, that's what I thought, it was over 400. Like 40, that was six years ago. That was six years ago. Six years ago. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I know. It's not, uh, it's not cheap. A couple of city towns, uh, King and Peter are only any other questions? Is there, is there, there a any question? Hold on, Dick. No, to no, keep with, mine goes back to GTV, so keep okay. on that subject. Oh, that, that makes, my question is, does it make sense for us to go to the information town wise and have a high school system? If you're a parent, does it have an advantage to it? I mean, we already have a service at school. Is it, I think there are several different systems. Price, and, and the price is extremely high. They're, they're not, they yeah. I think um, last town that I knew bought it, it was like six seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In terms of bang for the buck, I, I don't I don't know what research has been done uh, on Chief Don and, and Neil, but uh, Pentonation tends to be a pretty more on the high end type of bus software. And in terms of its functionality, I hate to I don't want to uh, diminish what the services they offer, but having been on the budget committee, I've been too impressed with the reports that we get. And, I just be candid with you. So if that if that's I don't think that's the standard that we should be looking at going for. But yeah. as you can say, I think the conversation is getting more into yeah. the specifics, you know, the specifics of the software versus right. the, the budget cost. item that right. there's a good call. Um, anything else? And, and, and to your point, I mean I don't want to belabor the issue here, so but my question 
has everything to do with the cost. But I, I really, I mean, I'd like to talk to somebody who's involved in it as it pertains to the selection or the selection of an open source route. Because I know the city of New York and others are doing incredible things and they're reducing the licensing costs immensely. And I'd like to talk to somebody. Well, it would, it would be John and Neil. Neil, Neil in particular, who's the IT director. So, okay. Neil, Neil, thing I would say is, please have that conversation very quickly. Um, and you know, one of the things is that this has been on our radar screen for years, and uh, every single year that that goes by, we run that risk of, of not getting any support. And um, we're pretty. It's another one that we're pretty nervous. No, about. and I, I'm not saying you should yeah. put off your decision yeah. at all. I'm not saying that open source is an option now that wasn't even heard of two years right. ago. Things move very fast. Yeah. Does, it, does it require us to have programmers on staff? Because we don't have programmers on staff. Not necessarily, no. Uh, the next uh, bigger ticket item in terms of the CIP is called a GIS flyover. And uh, essentially, what that is, it's a massive tool for us. Flyover is exactly what it is it's an airplane that flies over the town, the Goss Town, and takes pictures, which allows us then, uh, it's digitized and allows us to use it in a myriad of different uh, functions. Uh, from uh, determining where our assets are, whether it be our roads, culverts, catch basins, so that when we're in the field, whether it be on DPW, or they know exactly where something is, and I think it goes down to, like, to within inches of where a structure might be. Um, we also use it for, um, for tax assessment purposes with a with an updated flyover, if someone makes any modifications to their home or their property, um, we can we can look at the old GIS, look at the new GIS, and then uh, for, for tax purposes or, or, or people paying, um, I'm just gonna continue with the, no, I'll get you, get you. Uh, we, uh, we've used it for code enforcement. Uh, the board, uh, every, seems like every few months, we someone is doing something uh, illegal on their property, whether they're having a junkyard or, or something, uh, and allows us to, to have that opportunity to see what was, what was the condition of that, that field or that property before, what does it look like now. So we often get uh, concerns from conservation, and uh, this will help uh, address that. Current to use. Current use, same thing. So uh, it has, uh, it's, it's a very critical piece of, uh, of data for us. The last one that we did was, I think, eight years ago, right, if not longer. And it's supposed to get updated every, I think, every five to seven, so. And I've got Bill first, and i got John. Okay, um, code, code enforcement aside from them, is somebody already using Google Earth? Yes. What are you buying that Google Earth is not giving you, other than higher quality? Higher quality. Well, yeah, 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 much higher quality. Yeah, yeah, mapping is, is the biggest one. So Topo. What? Two, topo. Two foot contours. Topo. Yeah, yeah contours. contours. So, well, and on the planning side of it, um, if a developer comes in, uh, they could technically buy our uh, our topography maps for, for planning purposes. Bill, you want to address yes, that? Uh, what, what happens with that is typically when a developer comes in with the plans for, for development, uh, our our uh, ordinance requires they have a certain topo, uh, uh, two to five foot contours on the topos. And with our, our uh, maps are so outdated that when they come in, they cannot buy that from us. They have to send people out in the field to do the topo where it's required. Uh, this is also required when anybody goes to conservation. So it's not just the flyover for what uh, for one department. This really spans pretty much uh, different commissions and different committees uh, within the town because conservation depends very heavily on this also whenever they go look at wetlands. and. The, the developers don't buy it, don't pay the town to, for, the, for the digitized format because ours is so outdated. So when they come in to do, uh, to do the plan, they physically have to go out survey. to do the survey. When they come in now, if we had the flyover and it was updated, when they come in, they could buy the digitized mapping from us for the area of their development. And it would be a source of revenue. Not that it's going to. Oh, cost. okay. So there's a. Okay. Oh, yeah. there's there, there, there is. Uh, and, and to say, well, how much is it going to be? I can't tell you that. Right. The only thing I can tell you is that nobody buys it from us because it's so outdated. 
Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're all of a sudden we're going to get you know twenty thousand dollars in revenue. Uh, but as no, I, no, I understand that's good that there's there's a revenue stream there. My other question really related to the cost, and that is to say, uh, and, and I know nothing about what's going on in the state statewide, but statewide does aerial acquisition yeah. on some kind of frequency. I have no idea what frequency basis there are. I know State of Maine is, is going through their areas right now. So have we looked at how we can offset this cost by trying to tap <coughs> into some state aerial? Yeah, well, not so much state. We, we, we have to look state, at the state. Yeah, state did come out. Um, state asked us for ours. So we are in with our GIS. Yeah. 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 This is definitely one. I'm going to next I, I just, just, just Bill, I just wanted to say we could purchase a Google Earth, but all we're getting is a picture. Right. Um, when they do a flyover, GIS flyover, it's coordinated or calculated, calibrated to latitude, longitude. So the picture of the manhole is actually in the, in the same location as the. GIS map the town has of that manhole. Oh, everything I, is right. And I was thinking in terms more of the Google Earth professional product, which does give you a lot more granularity and accuracy to pay for, of course, but it's, it's not $110,000, which is why I was asking. But yeah, it's also not updated as often. Right. Right. Uh, That's the refresh rate is not as good. John was next? Yeah, I was just curious. Is it 110000 for the software? No, not software. This is flyover. the actual, it's a flyover, and then it's the data from yeah. that flyover that gets integrated into our GIS. And, uh, but it's 110 to do it? Yeah. Yes. And then what <coughs> we, you know, to get it integrated. But the last thing that I have on it is, um, I don't know why I can't think of the group. I'm not a fan of them, but the ACLU is it, I think. Um, they are going to stroke about Big Brother watching us in our backyards. I mean, you take it a one, you take it a one shot. Um, uh, you know, it, it concerns me you know, just to hear this. The, the, uh, that's not budget side. This is John Burr personal side. Yeah, um, so I'm going to go back to more. I'm going to go more to the budget side. Um, Megan Cario was she's our town engineer, and uh, this is going to help her immensely in terms of designing um, our our drainage systems, our our road infrastructure. What happens is because a lot of our GIS data is so outdated, you have to actually physically go out into the field, survey it, and it's, it's very time consuming. So I know that you've, you've heard a common theme here. That common theme is that whether it be GIS or some of the other things that you mentioned, whether it be a dump truck for, for parks and recreation, um, you've got to try to get control of the human cost, which we pay benefits to, which, which go up a compound. Um, and trying to offset some of those uh, increases in the human cost of capital with technology. And the GIS is something that we have made a commitment to. It helps us incredibly in all of our engineering, whether it be uh, code enforcement, tax assessment, you name it. All of our departments seem to touch it a lot. Um, and it'll help us to be much more efficient in that regard. Um, and, and in, in the long run, save us money. And as Selectman Devanza said, um, there is a potential for some revenue when developers want to buy that data, but it has to be up-to-date data. It can't be, can't be eight years old. So how long is this? They, typically, they, they say five to seven years is when you should uh, do additional flyovers. When's the last time you did the flyover? I think it's eight. Eight years. Eight years. And along that line, the uh, town engineer gave a selectman a chart where in since the last eight years, where has there been development in the town? And all those parcels were colored red on uh, the town parcel map. And it was a significant portion of our town. And that's why if you log on to the town website and you look at the GIS database, you will see boundary lines, parcel lines, where houses have been built, but there's no image of a house. And that's why the data is eight years old. I was doing a calculation to find out. We're talking about the human side. So if I pick 110 and divide it by about seven, then I'm talking about maybe 15,000 a year. And that's what we're talking. And then every time that we have a submission for someone to make a change to their home or something, and someone should be going out and verifying the data, somehow we can verify the data, it's probably 50, it's, it comes back less than 15,000 to, would cost more than 15,000 to have a body 
perform those services. And, and yours, and yours, yours did not include any. You did not. Your calculation does not talk about on the, to the tax side where somebody does an improvement to their house and puts it in, they get a deck and they don't they put a right. 20 by 20 deck. They don't say anything that happens. Uh, they would. They should be paying another hundred dollars in taxes or something like that. Right. And the, the assessor. Um, is able to try to look at that. Um, so it has some of that, that impact as well for people paying their fair share. Um, so I think it has a huge overall plus. This one, um, and I think the selectmen kind of uh, universally embraced it. It touches like so many departments. Uh, that's why we think it's pretty critical. Are there any questions on that? critical for us. Um, the meeting taper position was added at the end of last, not, yeah, last year. And we had to use what was in the budget for this year. And since some of your meetings are longer than expected, <coughs> we're at the point right now in our budget, payroll-wise, where we're going to be cutting six hours a week of our time to finish the rest of the year with, with our payroll budget. Um, so the extra six hours for next year is critical. And if you want to add additional, that's even better. Thank you. Uh, last thing I want to, I want to leave on a, on a closing note is uh, something I think uh, Nick touched on before about the uh, call firefighters roofing uh, doing the re-roofing of Station 17. That's just one example of the volunteerism in our community in which I believe if we already were to calculate it, we'd probably save uh, well over a million dollars in terms of volunteering. You folks here, um, if you were paid, you probably would get paid a pretty good penny to do what, what you're doing, attending the meeting, so we appreciate that. Uh, but when you look at what's done on the parks and rec side, the people that volunteer to be umpires, coaches, referees, you look at our police department with the CERT team. We have, I think, 80 members of CERT now. All of that is uh, non-paid status, and I can't tell you how much uh, they do for us. Volunteerism uh, at the police department. We have senior citizens who come in and help us file file records as well. Um, you know, you name it. Seems like every time you turn around, there are people that are, that are volunteering. So in a, in a in a tough economy, um, I think that on the town side, and I know the school's got plenty of volunteers as well, but. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are helping us out to try to keep the taxes as, as, as low as possible. Again, I think the common theme that you probably should have seen throughout is uh, we tried to do our very best to try to keep our human costs uh, as, as low as possible. I don't think there were really any increases in these positions. There are some increases in hours here and there. Um, but we've restructured a lot to try to keep that human capital cost to, a, to an absolute minimum. But we, where we are, in a pretty dire situation is in our, our capital needs where we have made a lot of deferred deferments over the last couple of years. Um, we're open to any suggestions, but we look to partner with you. Uh, as you can see, that, that big thing that I mentioned before, we went last year, we were historically spending in that three, three and a half million dollar range for capital related expenditures down to last year, 1.5. So it, it is what it is, but again, uh, we desperately need to address some of these things. 
But he mentioned extinction 17 as a, a fact of history. Uh, about 40 years ago, that land was donated. All the materials were in kind donated. And that was entirely staff, uh, built with volunteer effort. So station 17, when it was up, uh, cost the town nothing. Right. I and, I, and I do, I believe. Right. 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 So that was the Penarville Association. The Penarville Association. I with what you're right. saying. And, and, and it's outstanding. And in these economic, our economic times, it is an opportunity for a local entrepreneurial type to come together. The degree to which we can find these solutions and work together at the local level, I think it's outstanding. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Parks and Recreation, where in his budget, uh, Ray included uh, materials to, to fix the pavilions, but volunteers are actually going to actually do it. So, uh, if there's no further questions, again, I just want to thank you for spending a Saturday uh, with us. I guess our Dan, our group will have another Saturday at the school board, I guess, at some point. Do we know yet? November 19th. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.